Hello and welcome to a new review with TradingSuzen.net. Today I will present you the new Redmi or also called Hongmi 1S, which is a replacement for the Hongmi 1 which was released last year and is the cheapest version to get into the Xiaomi universe. Today I would like to make it a little bit different and not compare the Redmi 1S to the Redmi 1 because it's nearly the same device. The specification haven't changed really much. The ROM got double sized from 4GB to 8GB and we got a Snapdragon compared to a MediaTek CPU like in the Redmi 1. Of course I will tell you something about the small bugs the Redmi 1 had and are maybe solved in the new Redmi 1S, but I would like to compare it to the Motorola G, which is one of the most affordable phones in Europe you can get right now. Like you can see, the design of the Motorola G and the Redmi 1S is a little bit different, but from the price and the specifications, both phones are really similar. Let's have a look at the specifications. Let's compare the specifications. Both have a Snapdragon 400. The Redmi 1S gets a little bit more speed with 1.6 GHz, the Motorola G with 1.2 GHz. Both have the same graphic cards. The displays are different. The one has 4.5, the, the other one has 4.7. The resolution is really the same. Both have 1 GB of RAM, 8 GB of ROM. The Redmi 1S can have a micro SD card and so extend the space. The Motorola G is really set to 8 GB or 16 GB. The Redmi has a 8 megapixel camera, the Motorola G a 5 megapixel, Redmi 1.6 in the front and a Motorola G a 2 megapixel in the front. Both have really good GPS. Both have the nearly same Wi-Fi standards, Bluetooth 4, the Redmi 1S has also dual SIM and both have around 200 mAh battery. Motorola G comes with Android 4.4 and the Redmi 1S comes with Android 4.3 and you have MIUI 5.0. And in size you can see the Redmi 1S is a little bit bigger as the Motorola G. Let's go further with the design and start with the Redmi 1S. Like you can see it looks completely the same like the old Redmi 1S. The plastic cover is really nice because it's not so slippery like with the Mi 2 for example and I like really the edges of the phone. You can get it really nice in the hand and the grip is really nice. In respect of the design I'm a really fan of the Xiaomi design. It's really simple, the edges are really nice, you can hold it really good in, in the hand. 4.7 inch is a really nice standard and really nice display size. It's not too big, it's not too small. Also nice are that there are hardware buttons, not software buttons on the screen. So you can really, really use the whole screen to move and to see all the, all the pictures and all the movies. And it's a really compact phone. It's of course a little bit more heavier than some other phones. But Xiaomi keeps really its continuity with its design. When you like a Redmi, you also like the Redmi Note, you also like a Mi 2, because they are pretty similar with its design. Therefore you have a really nice brand recognition. Let's have a look at the Motorola G. I had this phone for about 2-3 weeks and it was my main phone and I really liked it. It's a really compact phone, it's 4.5 inch and all the edges are really round. The, the main edge on the side, it's not as round as it is on a Redmi 1S, but still it lies really good in the hand. Also the button at the back, mostly touch it with your finger and it feels really really nice. It's one of the most most loved designs I ever used because you put it out of your pocket and you want to use it. You really want to touch this phone and it's so compact and so nice to hand. I really, really loved it through all the time I, I used it. Mostly the edges. I really like the edges. The th sad thing is that the buttons are on the screen and you have a really, really big bottom which, which could be used for putting some hardware buttons there. Anyway, Motorola did a really great job with the design and I really liked it through the whole time. Compare both phones to each other. As you can see from the thickness, it's really nearly the same. The size of course is a little bit different. We have 4.5 inch on the right side with on-screen buttons and 4.7 inch with hardware buttons. In my case, I really like the Motorola G a little bit more. I really like the it is a compact phone, you can touch every corner of the phone with one hand and one finger. So my favorite in design was really the Motorola G. 
From the design let's move to the display and, and the quality of the display. As we compare both screens to each other you see they have a really good quality. Both screens have 720p and it's way enough to see all the details and it's a really clear and crisp display for both of the phones. As talking about the brightness, both phones have nearly the same brightness. The Motorola G is a little bit brighter than the Redmi 1S. Go more into the detail with the Motorola G. You can see that the colors are really, really strong and it's a really nice display to look at. I really like the display of the Motorola G because as you can see the colors are really bright and, and strong. But strange thing was that the colors at the photos when you were shooting it when you're putting it on the PC, they were a little bit pale. But I really like the screen of the Motorola G and love to watch some movies and play some games on it. Compared to the Redmi 1S, the screen is also a really nice screen with bright colors, with strong colors. And although I, I think the screen is a little bit like 10% more pale than the screen of the Motorola G, the pictures when you're shooting were even better, like 10 to 20% better on the Redmi 1S with color and strongness like on the Motorola G. When talking about the view angle, it's nearly on both phones the same and you can watch even from the side a good game or a good movie and your partner on the left and the right side will see the same colors and the same strongness and, and clearness of the picture or the movie like you see. So finally I can say both screens are really nice. The only difference I would say the Motorola G has a little bit more intensive colors than the Redmi 1S. But only a little bit. From the display let's move on to the system and we start with the Redmi 1S where you see my Y 5.0. This is a really customized Android system and it's here based on Android 4.3. There are nearly no differences between this version and the version from the last Redmi 1 which was based on Android 4.2. It is a little bit faster in the Redmi 1S but it's also due to the new Snapdragon CPU. Anyway, the features are nearly the same. Of course, they got some updates and you, some apps have new design elements or some new features. But overall, it's the same system with a good performance and a lot of customized and special and extra features. And if you know MyUI 5.0 and Xiaomi, you know they're putting a really nice complete package together. The system has a lot of apps that you would usually download from the App Store. You have a nice recorder, you have a transfer app, you have a really nice clock with a lot of features. We have a nice flashlight app and also a backup app which saves nearly everything. There are also some great standard apps which are usually found on every phone like the radio, the calculator, the calendar, but they have all a little bit different design and you can really customize it through the whole system with a lot of themes which is really nice. There is also a beautiful music app completely redesigned and has a lot of features which you usually search and, and buy extra apps for. There is also a file manager that looks really nice and has great features. And there is also a security app which puts a lot of functions and features together. For example, controlling the mobile data or looking at your storage and, and cleaning it a little bit up. Overall, Xiaomi puts a really good package together and you see it really that Xiaomi listens to the users and adds a lot of features that are really useful. So at the end you don't have to download a lot of apps when you start and get the phone the first time. Compared to this, Motorola uses really stock Android. They haven't changed really much with the normal Android 4.4. They got some extra apps which for example can use the Motorola ID to locate your mobile phone. But after all it's stock Android. It's not a bad thing because stock Android is a really beautiful system and got a lot of features that are really useful. And because it's nearly stock Android, Motorola can really fast update the system. So you got all the latest updates from uh, Google really fast on the Motorola G. For example, the new 4.4 got some new features with the RAM management and the speed on old devices. So the system runs really smooth. Even the, the CPU is a little bit slower than on the Redmi 1S. I feel that the Motorola G is a little bit faster on some of the apps. It's it's not on every app, 
but I will say it is a 60 to 40. So 60% of the apps runs faster on the Redmi 1S and 40% ran faster on the Motorola G, which is really amazing for such a great and budget phone. But every, every app went really smooth and I had even no lags or anything at all. Coming back to the system, I have to say that I'm using here Nova Launcher with a click wide theme, which I really like because every icon get the same design. And this is a really advantage of stock Android because you don't have a lot of apps pre-installed on the phone. You can customize everything. So of course you have to download every special app like a backup app or a file manager from the store, but the Play Store offers you a lot of alternatives so you can customize your mobile phone as you want. At the end, every user had to decide by its own. Some users like a really stock Android and customize it by its own, and some users like the complete package. Let's move on to the performance of the mobile phones, and let's start with the standard benchmark, the Antutu benchmark, which are already done on both mobile phones, and I will show you the results. Let's have a look. The Redmi 1S shows you around 20,000 points and the Motorola G shows you around 17,000 points and it looks like 3,000 points or it sounds like 3,000 points are a lot of and the speed would be way faster on the Redmi 1S but in the end Android 4.4 is really really good optimized so most of the time both phones are nearly the same speed. I, like I said it is 60 to 40. Some apps are faster on the Redmi 1S, but only some milliseconds. And some apps are faster on the Motorola G. Let's compare also both phones with the 3D benchmark. And there you see mostly the same results because both use the same graphics card. Therefore, both phones have nearly the same results with graphic. So as you see, the benchmarks show that the Redmi 1S is way faster than the, the Motorola G. But let's prove it and let's see what the real case is. I would like to compare it with some apps. Let's start with the Facebook Site Manager. And you see both open at the same time and it is a little bit faster on the Motorola G. But only a little bit faster. Let's compare some other apps. For example, the Google Plus app. There you see it's also a little bit faster on the Motorola G, but only a millisecond. And we had some different uh, different websites loaded. So let's let's do a test with the Pocket app. And there you see they are nearly the same speed. Let's do another test. And we compare the browser. And there you see the Redmi 1S is here way faster than the Motorola G with loading. So at the end, I would say both phones are on the same level. Although the Redmi 1S has around 400 megahertz more CPU power than the Motorola G, the Motorola G has a new Android 4.4 system, which has a better management with RAM and better management with lower hardware. And finally, I would say both mobile phones have the same performance. Let's also see some other apps, like for example, the calendar, they open both the same time or some other app like the calculator nearly the same time. What is really important is the gaming performance. And there you can see both mobile phones run nearly the same power and the same speed. Games run really, really smooth on both mobile phones and I nearly could play every game without any lags. But some hardcore games like Heroes of Castle lagged a little bit on the Redmi 1S a little bit more than on the Motorola G. And the end, most of the games in the Play Store played really, really well without any lag. Let's move to the camera. And we start with the Redmi 1S. And here I really like my OI camera app because it has a lot of features and a lot of options. You can choose from different like panorama view. You can also activate HDR. You can uh, customize the filters and see it in live view what the filter shows you. This is a really great feature to create unique photos really fast. But there are even more features. You can, for example, adjust the focus mode. You can set the ISO mode and the lights. So it gives you a lot of possibilities to create a really nice and unique picture. On the other side, let's have a look what Motorola does. There you see the stock Android app with some of 
new features and new interface, but there aren't really a lot of options to choose from. You can choose between, uh, for example, the flashlight, you can set HDR, but that's it. It's, it's fast, of course, but uh, there aren't a lot of features to customize your pictures. I made some pictures with both phones nearly with the same angle and you see that the Motorola G shoots most of the time with 5 megapixel in 16 to 9 and the Redmi 1S shoots in 8 megapixel in 4.3 but you see that the Redmi 1S pictures are a little bit more brighter, they have more color, they, they look a little bit stronger in color and of course the, the angle of the pictures are wider as the Motorola G. You're getting more things on the picture with the Redmi 1S than with the Motorola G. Anyway, both phones making really good pictures, but I was really impressed from the quality of the Redmi 1S. Mainly the macro modus was really, really nice and really easy to shoot and to focus, but also some panorama views got really nice results. This doesn't mean that the Motorola G makes bad pictures, but like you see also here in the video, the Redmi 1S is way better in making really colorful and nice pictures as the Motorola G. Let's move to the sound. And the sound wasn't always an advantage of the Xiaomi smartphone, doesn't matter if it's a Redmi or it's a Mi 3, the speakers have been always a little bit weak. And it's the same with the Redmi 1S. I would even say the Motorola G is 20 to 30% louder than the Redmi 1S with the speakers. Let's have a look. I don't know if you can hear it, but compared to the Redmi 1S, the speaker of the Motorola G are really loud. And you can, for example, put it in the middle of a room and get the whole room with sound compared to the Redmi 1S, which wouldn't get the same quality and the same loudness as the Motorola G. But let's also listen to the Redmi 1S sound. There I have to say that the sound from the speakers with the Redmi 1S is really flat. There is no big bass. Of course the Motorola G doesn't have a big bass too, but it's way louder. So the point gets really to the Motorola G. Compared to this, the sound of the headphones is way better with the Redmi 1S. Xiaomi uses a really nice sound chip, so the music sounds really intensive on the Redmi 1S compared to the Motorola G. Therefore, I would say both have advantages and disadvantages. Motorola is better with speakers and the Redmi 1S is better with the headphones. So in the end, they are nearly even. Let's move on to some other stuff and we start with the space. Both have uh, the Motorola G and the Redmi 1S have 8 GB of space where you can use around 5 to 6 GB of space. And the main advantage of the Redmi 1S is that you can use a micro SD card. But the disadvantage right now is that MyUI doesn't use this micro SD card really well. You can't really save pictures on it or apps can't be stored on it. So right now you can use the micro SD card to put some videos on it or pictures. But I'm pretty sure that there will be soon and they're all already working on it. Some moods to switch for example the micro SD card to internal space and some other stuff. And at the end, it will be a really great advantage to extend the space with a micro SD card compared to the Motorola G, which is limited to 8 or 16 GB. Also, dual SIM with the Redmi 1S is a great advantage compared to the Motorola G, where you can use two SIM cards, which is a great advantage if you live, for example, at the border. Let's have a look at the battery time. And there I have to say, both have similar battery time. Although the Redmi 1S uses a bigger screen, you can get a whole day without charging your phone and sometimes even 
one and a half day or two days. Yeah, I got some statistics. I got one day and three hours with a screen on time of about two and a half hours, which was really, really nice. And I think both devices are here nearly the same. Although the statistics say that the Redmi 1S got more screen time than the Motorola G, I would say the Motorola G gets a little bit longer battery time than the Redmi 1S, but it's also due to the smaller screen size. Anyway, both phones have really good balance between the performance and the battery time, and you can go through a whole day without charging your mobile phone easily. And if you are not a hardcore user, you can get even two days. With the GPS quality, I would say both phones have the same perfect GPS quality. I tested both phones as a navigation with my car and also use it with my running app. And I have to say both have a really perfect quality with GPS. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit foggy or a little bit cloudy or it's a sunny day. Both have a perfect GPS and you always find your navigation without seeing that the cursor is jumping around or leading you to a wrong direction. I will show it you on the map. I got a half an hour right and both phones have the same quality. So if you want to use it as a navigation, both phones are really good and precise with GPS quality. And I tried it out in my sleeping room, which is really far away from my router. And as you can see on the picture, the Redmi 1S got still two bars where the Motorola G doesn't have any bar, which is really sad because I really expected a little bit more from Motorola G with connectivity. But I have to say that not many phones got two bars in my sleeping room, only some Huawei or the Mi 3 got two bars in my sleeping room. I also tried out some other features like MHL and OTG. And as you can see here in the video, I tried it out with MHL and there you see there is no signal with MHL, which is really sad because it's a really great feature and most of the Xiaomi smartphone doesn't support it. Only the Mi 2S supports MHL right now. Compared to this, OTG isn't a problem. You have your OTG cable, putting, a, for example, a USB stick on or a hard drive, and you can use your hard drive or USB stick as it would be in your internal space. You go through your file manager and select your USB stick, and there you see all the stuff which is on the USB stick or the hard drive. And for example, here, a movie with MKV is no problem to watch it really live and clear and without any lags. At last, I wanted to show you some accessories. For example, here a Gear Mac Joypad, which I got, which is really nice because it really makes fun to play some games. It doesn't work with all the games in the Play Store, but especially emulators work really well and it makes really fun to play Super Mario on such a nice screen with a good joypad. I also wanted to show you my favorite accessory, tempered glass from Nilkin, which is a screen protector that is really doable. But the really cool thing is, as you see in the video, it sucks by its own. So there are no bubbles or anything else. And it's really easy to attach the screen protector to a mobile phone. Therefore, it's my favorite screen protector because there aren't any problems and it's really doable. As last, I would like to show you some accessories like flip covers, covers, bumpers for the Redmi 1S. Because the Redmi 1S has the same dimension as the Redmi 1, you can use the same accessories as for the Redmi 1, for example, here the lens, and they will always fit. Let's get to the conclusion. The Redmi 1S replaces the old Redmi 1 with the MediaTek CPU. It has a faster CPU, a Snapdragon, and it's a really nice low budget smartphone and the cheapest way to get into the Xiaomi universe and MiWi 5.0. Compared to the old Redmi 1, it hasn't changed much. The space is a double sized from 4 to 8 gig and it has a Snapdragon compared to the MediaTek, which of course gives a better GPS. More interesting is if we compare the Redmi 1S to the Motorola G, which is also a low budget smartphone. And as they both have nearly the same specifications and the price tag, it's really interesting to see how they compare to each other. Let's start and compare the design. And there I have to say, I really like the design of the Redmi 1S. I like the nice rounded edges, but also the Motorola G is a really compact smartphone, which is really nice and handy. 
Also the system is something a user has to decide, therefore I'm giving both one point because it depends on the user if he likes a complete package like with the Redmi 1S and my UI or he likes stock Android and wants to customize everything with special apps from the Play Store. As we move to the performance, the Redmi 1S is faster in benchmarks and you see 3000 points more, but in the system and in daily use, they are nearly the same. I would say 60-40, the Redmi 1S is in 60% of the time faster than the Motorola G, but this is only in milliseconds. With the sound, I would also say they have more even because the Redmi 1S has better sound with the headphones, where the Motorola G has a way better speaker than the Redmi 1S. As we get to the camera, the Redmi 1S got an extra point, because the camera got a higher resolution, the colors are a little bit stronger, not on the screen, but in life, and you have this great camera app, which gives you a lot of options and a lot of features to make really nice and unique pictures. And last, all the other chips, where I have to say that wireless LAN was way better on the Redmi 1S, the Bluetooth had nearly the same quality and the same performance, and GPS was exactly the same, really perfect and really nice GPS quality to go for a run or to use it as navigation with your car. The GPS quality was on both phones, really perfect. Where the Redmi 1S has also a great advantage is that it can use dual SIM, which is great if you live for example on the border and want to use two different carriers, or you live for example in the town and you want to use one carrier for mobile connection and one carrier for a phone connection. And it can also extend the space with a micro SD card, which isn't used much right now, but I'm sure that there will come some moods soon where you can, for example, switch the SD card to internal space or use it even better for apps or other stuff. So at the end, we got six points for the Redmi 1S and four points for the Motorola G, which of course shows that the Redmi 1S wins the competition, but it's a close win. And I would say both phones are really good. It depends on the user if he likes a more compact phone with 4.5 inch or a bigger phone with 4.7. And the main decision one have to make if you're choosing for a good budget phone is if you want to have a complete package with MyUI, which has great features and gets updates every week to extend the system, or you want to have the latest Android stock version with all the nice and slim features to extend it with nice and alternative apps from the Play Store. Thanks for watching my review. I hope you enjoyed the time and have a look at our other reviews in our YouTube channel at tradingshazen.net.